Metroidvanias are some of the weirdest games I've ever played. From Hollow Knight, Ori, and Dead Cells, to the ones that started it all. But while these games represent some of the most beloved and cherished franchises in an entire industry, they also have something I really don't like. Utility-gated exploration, progression, and fun. And for me, it's something that makes otherwise fantastic and expertly designed games utterly tedious. So today, I'm going to tell you exactly why Metroidvanias are so great for some people, while mind-numbing for others like me. And then at the end, reveal the real greatest game in this genre of all time, that no one's talking about. Recently I finally got around to playing Hollow Knight for the first time. To say it's a beloved game and soon to be franchise would be an understatement, and within 5 minutes of booting it up, I could tell exactly why. The world and story oozes an atmosphere that spills over with intrigue, the combat is fast paced, fluid, and constantly evolving, and the platforming is smart while still being straightforward enough to pick up instantly. It's honestly the perfect type of game for me to make one of my iceberg theories on, and I probably will one day. But you see, just as fast as I started falling in love with the game, I quickly began to remember why I have so many problems with these games in the first place. After beating the first boss, I stumbled upon the second zone in the game, the Green Path. It's a zone that lies at the antithesis of the more black and somber notes of the first area, and it's a breath of fresh air. However, that sense of elevation lasted for only a moment, because then I ended up here, looking at my map, wondering where to go. Down one path was a locked door, and up another a ledge I wasn't able to reach. It's the exact type of moment and struggle that Hollow Knight intends for you to have. It's at the core of its game design. And it's this same game design that has led so many others to fall in love with the Metroidvania genre of games in the first place. Stumbling upon a new discovery and having no clue how to handle it, only to come back later when you've unlocked the necessary item or upgrade. But you see, that's just the issue. Progression relies on things outside of your control. I can't get up on that ledge, I can't get through that door, and some areas are completely blocked off. That is, until I unlock that special something that gets me in. So you open your map and look around, for the spots you miss that are still unexplored, and for those little nooks and crannies full of secrets you might be able to solve now that unlock new abilities and help you progress. It's objectively good game design. It forces the player to think, to adapt, and to truly learn the ins and outs of every environment in order to use it to their advantage. The world itself becomes the main character. And it's immersive as hell, especially in Hollow Knight, I won't lie. But in my estimation, from some random guy who codes and plays video games, it doesn't matter. Because it also goes against everything, at least for me, that makes games so special in the first place. I know I've been talking mostly about Hollow Knight, but the first Metroidvania I really fell in love with was Ori and the Will of the Wisps. But just like Hollow Knight, I didn't like it for how it was structured. Rather, I loved it for everything else. The whimsical soundtrack, the bright and vibrant colors, the engrossing combat, and the world and set pieces that lit a fire in my soul. And yet, at its very core once again, was a game that frustrated me so much. In standard Metroidvania fashion, Ori 2 is also built behind the idea of gating progression for the player. Every moment of intrigue is met by a brick wall, one that requires the player to go back through previously tread grounds to solve. Every door or obstacle has a specific key, one that you need to find. It makes for an engaging game, but a horribly unengaging experience. What I mean by that is when I play games like this, I can feel myself starting to shut my brain off. They don't respect my intelligence. Instead of letting me solve these puzzles on my own on the fly, I'm forced to play by the game's rules, and backtrack sometimes across an entire map just to endlessly search for the solution to a problem I already knew the answer to. Here's an example. When you come across an area in a metroidvania where you need to double jump in order to reach it, it completely destroys the game for me. Because I know what I need to do. I know there must be a double jump or monarch wings, or a spring, or some sort of gadget or add-on to my character that will finally let me push forward. But it's that cognitive dissonance of knowing exactly where to go and what I need to do without actually being able to do it that makes these games so hard to recommend in my book. 
The power fantasy intrinsic in all games is gated behind pre-planned set pieces, hidden rooms, and power-ups instead of the player actually growing in their own understanding of the mastery of the game itself. Bosses get harder and the platforming becomes more challenging, but this all stems from the fact that the game hides the challenge from you in the first place. Harder bosses and more challenging set pieces only can appear later in game because you quite literally don't have the necessary upgrades in order to tackle them early on, and each gated area in each level serves as a way to block the player from moving on too quickly. The much better and more interesting way to do this is to instead throw as much challenge at the player as quickly as possible, giving them everything they need to win, but providing key upgrades and powers that simply make the experience easier or more fun as you go. Because in an environment like that, the gameplay revolves around the player and their own ability to understand how to play the game, rather than the new skills they've acquired. Skills in video games should be an optional augmentation for your character, not a requirement to move the story forward. The way Metroidvanias do this is fine in their own right, and I get why people love them. But I truly believe that the power-ups we are getting in Metroidvanias should just allow us to experience new playstyles, and never be a requirement. Because as it stands, it takes away from the core of what makes games great, the ability to give the player agency over their own world and story. And it gets worse too. Because games like Ori and Hollow Knight also encourage a lot of backtracking. You have to go back through areas that you've already cleared and fight the same enemies over and over, but this time with better skills and more abilities. Which yes, makes you feel good about how much better you're at the game now, and how much better you understand the levels, but I don't think that sense of satisfaction overrides the pure boredom of looking at my map and knowing I need to go explore the same areas again for the fifth time just to get into some weird underground tunnel I didn't have access to before. Is that really better than having a brand new zone and area with new art design? Well the answer is, it can be, but the way it's implemented in Metroidvanias is so problematic because those areas that we get to go explore later are places we already knew about and simply kept a mental check for for later. When you stumble upon a new area, the absolute worst feeling you can get is realizing that yes, you discovered something cool, but no, you can't go there yet come back when you have double jump. It's such an insulting way to design games that once again forces players to shut off their brains and simply buckle up their seatbelts and enjoy the ride. Backtracking through an area can be amazing, but only when those discoveries that you make are ones that are not gated by some abstract piece of game design that stops all the fun. If you find a new area, you should almost always have a way to access it. If you have a hard boss, it should almost always be at least possible early on. Don't gatekeep the fun and intrigue from everyone just because you have a specific vision for your game. That's what movies are for. Games though, games can be so, so much more impactful than that. Putting the power in the player's hands. A game where your vision is the player's vision. The real question then becomes though, have any of these games actually done it right? Well yes, one specifically has. A game that is one of the greatest ever made, that is criminally underrated nowadays and seldom talked about. Prey and Prey Mooncrash. For those of you that don't know, Prey and its DLC Mooncrash originally came out around 5 years ago now, and represented the best work Arcane Studios has ever done, even to this day. In both of the games, you're trapped on a space station and moon base alike and must find your way out. But the true genius of this series is that while most people think of these games as immersive sims and horror thriller mixes alike, they also are in many ways metroidvanias, but most impressively, the best metroidvanias out there. And it comes down to one key change. Prey and Mooncrash respect the player's intelligence. Instead of gating progression and fun behind esoteric and lazy power-ups, each and every challenge you are met with has multiple ways to figure it out. And as much as possible, Prey focuses on always giving you a way out. A perfect example of this comes right at the start of the game, with the first real weapon you can find, called the Glue Cannon. It's meant to give you a way to freeze enemies in place so that you can take them out with your wrench, and it does a great job at that. But in the same room you find the Glue Cannon in, it quickly becomes apparent that you will be coming back here later in the game. There's an upper floor with no staircase or ladder to it, and the game instructs you that the main mission is through a door on the lower level that will take you to the main space station. Here's where Prey solves the Metroidvania problem though. Because for players that were paying especially close attention, that same glue cannon you just picked up when fired leaves a hardened piece of glue on the ground that the player can use as a platform. 
So what if instead of waiting for the end game to come back here with your jetpack, double jump, and bouncy explosions to get upstairs, you instead make your own makeshift bridge right from the start. And lo and behold, it works, and you can get upstairs and unlock some of the deepest secrets in the game right from the start. What originally looked like an obstacle gating my fun was in fact a puzzle that always had an answer. The only difference is how each player solves it. And the same can be said for Prey Moon Crash too. Even though you are constantly going through the same exact moon base and areas, there are so many puzzles and so many ways to solve them that you feel like you're almost playing a new map each time. Like when you discover that you can use your shotgun not only to destroy enemy robots, but also turn off Typhon gates or power up generators. Each of which can have a drastic effect on your gameplay and game style and how you're going to tackle different objectives. And throughout all of this, the moon base simulation is constantly changing and throwing new obstacles at you like turning the power off in a room where it was perfectly fine before. This is what Metroidvanias should be all about. It's a genre ripe with opportunities for player expression and storytelling, yet by my estimation Prey is the only game in the series to have mastered it yet. In Hollow Knight, Ori, and the greatest Metroidvania games of the past decade, challenges were solved through backtracking and level ups. In Prey though, challenges are solved using your brain, with the backtracking and power ups just being enhancements to the immersive sim genre itself. So how do we tie it all together then? How can the beloved series of Metroidvanias finally sink their teeth not only into the core audience now, but people like me too? How do we fix the problems with Metroidvanias? First of all, progression should be gated by the player's mind, not by a character's abilities. No more doors that need a key, no more impossibly high places to reach early on. From the very beginning of the game, the player should be able to accomplish anything they want with enough ingenuity. I truly think that the only upside of the existing mechanics in Metroidvanias like locked doors is that they can set a specific pacing and world progression by forcing players to do certain things in certain orders all down a predefined path. But robbing a player of the ability to actually think for themselves and create their own solutions is too much of a trade-off in my humble opinion. I could see a counter argument that I'm basically just saying Metroidvanias aren't good and should be a different genre instead, which is kind of a non-argument. But I'd counter that, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's lazy game design in the first place for what could otherwise be immersive and emergent thought-provoking levels. Simply giving the player different options to find a key to open a door isn't actually a good choice. Giving your player multiple ways to open that door is. Yes, it requires a lot more thought for how each upgrade and gadget will play with existing environments, but isn't that what makes games games in the first place? Because games, to me at least, aren't about going back and forth in each level to find the key to open the door. It's about creating your own key to each door instead. Want to know why it's fun going back to previous locations you've been to in Ori and Hollow Knight? In part, it's because your character grew and has new skills to use on these enemies that are now weaker than before because of it. But it's even more so because you grew. You figured out the attack patterns, the environments, and the game. Your understanding of the fundamental mechanics and of the world itself became more perfected. And that feeling of conquest always feels so good. It's an inherent part of being human. So why not make the whole game like that? Focus less on gating fun, gating discovery, and more on freedom of expression, and a full and undying trust in the player to be smart enough to figure it out for themselves. Creating your own solution to challenges will always be more interesting than knowing there's an answer simply hidden away in a back room that's now unlocked. Metroidvanias as they stand now are fully linear experiences disguised as games with choice. If there's a specific item or upgrade you need to get past an obstacle, it was never a choice at all. And once again, that's for the realm of movies, not games. At least not the ones that make me so damn excited about this industry. If anything, Metroidvanias need to learn from immersive sims and create worlds and systems that rely more on player input and agency. And they also could learn a thing or two from roguelites and craft worlds that aren't so static. But then again, by doing all of this, wouldn't Metroidvanias just become something different? A new genre entirely? You know, I recently made a video about Outer Wilds and why I don't think that game's as good as many people make it out to be. And spoiler alert for the same arguments I'm making here. And the biggest point of contention I saw in the comments was that I basically was just arguing I wanted a different game. And yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. 
Everyone has their preferences. Like I said before, I get why some people like Metroidvanias, and I certainly understand why others like me don't. But at their core, Metroidvanias need to improve, because I think intrinsically by their very nature, they are missing a fundamental ingredient that would make them so, so much more special as games. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.